welcome to Millennial Milkshake, the podcast where three horny kings revisit, re-experience, and review things from our childhood. My name is Colin O'Connell, and I was born in 1994. My name is Josh Sakali, and I was born in 1995. And my name is Michelle Potter. I was born in 1997. Michelle, what the fuck did you make us watch? <laughs> <laughs> I have been looking forward to this episode for so long, you guys. It's Black Cauldron Day. Ooh. Thank you, Michelle, for this. This um, well, I just got. I got a lot to say about this. Oh, I'm so excited. You know, and, and yeah. I have a lot. Of, I have Thanks. a lot of good things to say about it too. It's not all bad. Really? All right. It's, that's shocking. <laughs> but that's I surprising mean, to me. But like, so this was this was Michelle's pick, right? So, Michelle, I have not seen this when I was a kid. So I. Of course, it was Michelle's pick. Who else would pick this movie? <laughs> I have never seen it, so I'm curious to really? hear about. Yeah, Colin, have you seen this movie? Fuck no. <laughs> what? Yeah, have not no. seen this. I've seen like every Disney movie. I've not seen this. I didn't even know this was a Disney movie. Wow. Doesn't oh look God. like a Disney movie. Okay. Yeah, there was a few years, maybe a year, maybe two years, maybe three, where this was my favorite movie. I mean, I watch this movie all the time, just all the time. Wow. I mean. I loved this movie. I really loved it. And I'm so ex- oh, Wow, I can't believe you guys have never seen this. I, I I know it's not a popular Disney movie, and I guess not a lot of people Cut. have heard of it. But yeah, I, this was my favorite movie as a kid. It, it was one of my favorite movies, and I just I just loved it so much. Now, now that we're doing this episode, are you ex- are you still excited to do this episode or are you a little saddened? Um I'll get into my feelings rewatching it. I'm I'm really excited still to like talk about it okay, and see cool. what you guys think. Um, <laughs> I've got some feelings though upon rewatch. We'll see. So I mean, Michelle, what's 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 the Black Cauldron really about? Like like like, give us a brief like synopsis. <laughs> yeah, so. I'd love to know because I don't know, <laughs> and I watched it. <laughs> the Black Cauldron is supposed to be this epic journey of this assistant pig keeper boy, Taryn who just wants to be a hero and there's this this villain the horned king who um who's after the black cauldron the black cauldron has a special power where it can make armies rise from the dead and that's what the horned king wants he wants all of the dead armies to rise from the ground so he can like conquer the world or whatever and the pig that Taryn is the assistant pig keeper of has magic powers. So um, Henwin is the pig's name, can see, like he has visions, or she, I'm sorry, she has visions and she can see where the black cauldron is. And at the start of the movie, we find out that the Horned King knows that Henwin has these powers. So uh, Taryn is sent away to take the pig into hiding from the Horned King. And thus sets us off on a wonderful journey where Taryn loses the pig five seconds into the film. Instantly loses the pig. (laughs) He's like, protect this pig, this heat, everything. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to look at myself in the the lake. And the pig's gone. Pig's gone. (laughs) I mean, it could not have been more instant. He loses immediately. And uh, yeah, I guess the whole plot of the film is him trying to get the pig back and trying to stop the Horn King from getting to the Black Cauldron. Cool. So, are we gonna talk a little bit about like the mo- like some like some of the movie, or are we just gonna go right into like history class and then just save it all for the for the end? Because w- our movie episodes are pretty um can can get a little lengthy sometimes with our with our breakdown of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, don't know if we'll have a problem with this. With this, I'll be honest. <laughs> Were you guys, did you know of this movie before? Like, had you heard about its reputation? Yeah. You I, did. I've heard of this movie before. I, I've never seen it. I really did not know when I went. Okay. Yeah. So I knew nothing about this, but you know, watching it, I'll give a, I'll give a little, like a little something about it. I can, I mean, Michelle said it earlier. This is like a weird rendition of Lord of the Rings almost, but Colin said something else. Colin, you said it was... Well, the the witches, right? Is that what we were talking about? Well, you all, you, you oh, said you... oh no, I know what you're talking about. It's kind of Zelda e. It's kind of Legend of Zelda e, and not in the good video game way, in the shitty TV series way. So I've not um, seen that, so I don't know. Yeah, oh, it's bad. It's real bad. But you know, even the even there is a little bit of the video game aspect to it because um he or I'm sorry, the princess um don't I don't really remember anyone's name in this movie because their names are all weird and i don't know difficult for me to remember 
She has oh. this little glowy thing. Elonwi. Sure. <laughs> Bless you. Um, she has this little <laughs> like glowy thing like around her, which mm-hmm. is very reminiscent of Navi um, in <sighs> Ocarina of Time, who hangs around Link and stuff. Um, this little glowy fairy helping thing but it wasn't a fairy i don't understand what the glowy thing was around her did i did i dismiss that part i don't know either yeah uh, it wasn't a fairy it was just like a ball of light yeah that helped guide her i guess which is kind of what navi looks like in the video game it's just like she's just like a little blue ball of light that follows you Mm -hmm. around and like gives you prompts like like you know tells you how to do stuff but yeah it also animation wise i don't know if you guys are familiar with there are these two video games that uh, it's called uh made by the same studio i can't remember what it is uh king's quest and space ace are you guys familiar with these at all Mm -mm. if Mm -mm. you look them up on youtube they were they were these video games where um they were fully like animated like a like a almost like a movie like it looked like this and then you would have to you know uh make decisions in like cut scenes almost that would like move them at the right time uh looks just like this i mean not not even joking like, like the animation style is just like space ace and um uh i can't remember the other one did i say dragon's Light? i can't remember the other one um, um yeah what did you just say you said um... i'll look at i can't <laughs> even remember my is brain King's is something king's quest yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking of Dragon's Lair. <laughs> I can't remember. Definitely Space Ace, though. So, yeah. so I'm going to just, like, brief everyone on how I just got Lord of the Rings vibes. It was as soon as it started. I mean, like, as soon, like, so they mm-hmm. so they give you that whole, exp- they have that whole exposition intro about the king, who apparently is so evil and cruel that even the gods feared him, which, let I mean, we could talk about that for a second. You're, you're, you're a mortal man. And these gods are fearing you because you're just that evil. You're just that cruel. And are you kidding me? Really? You're just a bad guy. Like Yeah, and he's not like and like later on he's like, I will use the evil power of the cauldron. It's like, oh, so you're fully aware that you're evil. Like also it wasn't King's Quest, it was Dragon Slayer. I apologize. Oh, oh gotcha. No, Josh, when I tell you, I I was shocked by how much Lord of the Rings like I got from this. I was like, oh my god, this this is Lord of the like yeah, so and, like, similar. Not to mention that like I mean I think it's safe to say this was definitely Andy Serkis's breakout role. I mean it's no one really knows about it, but this he was clearly in this because <laughs> our character Gurgi oh apparently is the main influence for Smeagol slash Gollum. It's Mm-hmm. I mean, it's. I guess you could say it's. It's. If anything, maybe it's. A, maybe it's a mix. It's a clash between Clarence Nash and Andy Serkis, which Clarence Nash is one of the voice actors for Donald Duck. Now, I definitely hear more Andy Serkis Gollum in this, mm-hmm. but occasionally I'll hear a little Donald Duck in the mix. But holy shit, this guy, the the mannerisms, the voice, it's it everything and. It, yeah, I get Lord of the Rings came out and Colin, you said the fifties. Is that I know it came out around then. I think the book was published late forties. I think forty eight. So yeah, clearly before eighty five. So okay, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't read them, but I know it, you know it just probably describes Smeagol as you know probably having those mannerisms. Maybe so maybe it took a little bit from that. But guys, this was exactly exactly like Gollum. I mean... Well, mm -hmm. there... Well, mm, okay. So here's the thing, though. There was also a Hobbit animated movie, I think, released in the 70s or the 60s. And the Gollum... The mannerisms aren't the same because that Gollum is like a frog thing. But the voice is pretty... I feel like... I feel like Circus watched that. Maybe... I don't know. Maybe he watched this movie as a kid or something. But I feel like he kind of you can kind of see a lot of the similarities between like the voice specifically in the Lord of the in the Hobbit um, animated movie to his portrayal. So maybe it's like a mix of all that. So I didn't I didn't actually know that existed. So that that TV series is would you say the Gollum character is like Gurgi? No, the Gollum character is Fishman, Frogman. Oh. <laughs> but the, I'm just oh. saying the voice is kind of similar. Like you can kind of tell like. The voice might have been, might it may have influenced uh, Circus's voice too. But it's not just the voice. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like, it's just, it's every time he's on screen, I just feel like I'm actually watching Gollum. Like the way he, mm-hmm. I don't know. He's not as evil. No, yeah. He's, he's kind of a punk bitch version of Gollum. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but like his his English isn't like fully correct. It's like very like improper grammar. The same exact way. So I don't know if in the books that's how he talks. It probably is. But like mm-hmm. I don't know. That, that was that was insane when I saw that. Because at first I was like I was like oh Donald Duck. It's kind of like that, but like a weird distorted version of Donald Duck. And then it was like and then it hit me. I was like oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Like like you said, like immediately I was like. Lord of the is this Lord of the Rings? And I don't remember no. that at all as it like wasn't Lord a child. Of the Rings. <laughs> I don't remember like any of the like drawing a connection between that at all. And it, like immediately I was like, oh my god, this is so similar. Yeah, like I'm fairly yeah. certain Peter Jackson probably watched this. Like I I, th- I think Peter Jackson likes this movie a lot. I honestly think so because it's it's crazy. So it's 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 interesting that you guys and I'm not saying that I didn't pick up on some of the Lord of the Rings things, you know, uh similarities too, which that makes sense because I think these are based off a series of fantasy books mm-hmm. um that came out after Lord of the Rings and essentially the rule is any fantasy literature that came out any high fantasy literature that came out in a post Tolkien world takes a lot of influence from Tolkien like he was he's the Mm -hmm. dude um with that said it's interesting that you guys are going so hard on Lord of the Rings because I picked up on some other stuff the Horned King is very reminiscent of Skeletor from He-Man to me I don't know if you guys are familiar with Skeletor okay vaguely yeah yeah and um and the three witches there's the cauldron involved kind of reminded me of Macbeth, the you know doyle and trouble or whatever it's called um whatever that line is it's been a while since i read that but so it seems like this is kind of taken a little bit from and i think it's I th- is it based in wales i know they say Breton, which but i think it's based in wales this story yeah so it probably takes from welsh fantasy yeah, yeah. history too I guess I guess it's mostly just like it's it's mainly the Gurgi, but it's also like the Frodo like character of of Terran. But like a useless Frodo, like an even more useless yeah. Frodo. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. somehow. <laughs> but he's got he's got that like that like magical sword too. I mean I mean that's not that's that's not that's pretty basic, but still. We gotta talk about that sword. He doesn't do dick until he gets that sword and the sword does all the work. <laughs> Taron is like the worst fucking protagonist I think of any Disney movie I've ever seen. <laughs> he doesn't do a goddamn thing until he gets that sword and then she's and then the princess is like, "Oh, well, the sword did like most of the work," you know, like a rational human being would say. And he's like, "Well, it takes a good warrior to wield the sword." And it's like, "Dude, you were like bullying goats 5 minutes ago with a stick. Like you are not a great warrior." You know, you were abusing animals in the beginning of this movie. Yeah. Fuck them geese. Fuck them geese, though. I have them quoted saying, um, what do you what do you girls know about swords anyway? What a and dick. Like, like, asshole, she just helped you escape the dungeon, and you're going to just... Also, yeah, she's sh- like, a fucking princess. Yeah. I'm sure she has seen a million more swords, not, not the way I mean it, actual swords, <laughs> than you have ever seen in your entire life. All right, you little pissant piece of shit. My favorite part of that scene is when she responds with, you're so boring. <laughs> I, I love that line so much. That is a great line. <laughs> uh, so, okay, how do we want to do this? We're, we're like, we're already like getting into it. Like, I mean, this is a good conversation, yeah. but like. Let me. I gotta I learn like, some let me shit. Just... I'm getting dumber by the minute. Gotta learn some shit. The more you know, guys, the more you know the more we can get into this. <laughs> so Black Cauldron, right, released in 1985. It was directed by Ted Berman and Richard Rich, who later did The Fox and the Hound. The movie is based on the first two books of Lloyd Alexander's series, The Chronicles of Prydain, um, which Disney still, I think it's five books. Anyway, Disney still owns like the rights to these books. <laughs> That shut away in a basement somewhere. <laughs> that I mean, we could get another Black Cauldron at some point. Oh, they yay. could do it. They could do it. Yay. It was the first Disney animated movie to receive a PG rating. And the first Disney animated film to feature CGI, which is pretty cool. It's like the animation for the bubbles, the boat. I think the like floating orb of light and like the cauldron itself were all like CGI. The bubbles? <laughs> what a lame use of CGI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bubbles um so the black cauldron sort of has a reputation 
as being like the film that's considered one of the worst. Really? <laughs> in Disney. Yes. Um, you don't say. Well, I mean, when you look at it, it, the ratings are not terrible. They're not good, but like they're not bad. Like I've seen worse. Like I feel like I've seen like worst reviewed Disney movies. Yeah, like the one article I was reading grouped it with like Home on the Range and Chicken Little as like <laughs> some of the worst. And one article <laughs> title is like a single movie so catastrophically mishandled that it nearly wiped the towering Disney animation institution out of existence. Which, yeah, I don't know if you're going to get into this, Michelle, but it is often credited as the movie that almost killed Disney. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it is. Because, like, the production missed, like, just the disaster of production that happened during this movie is kind of insane. It's just a lot of, it's just a lot of, like, random pieces from, I mean, like Colin said, you you are getting a lot of different random stuff just thrown into it. So, I mean, yeah, I mean... There's, there's a lot of mess in it. There, Yeah, there's a lot of mess. So it had, like, at the time, an announced budget of $25 million, but, like, later people said it was closer to, like, $40 million, Um, and it was, at the time, like, the most expensive animated film ever made. In its opening weekend, it made only $4 million <laughs> at the box office. Um, and its, like, final domestic gross was just over $21 million. All right, so <laughs> just to get into there, like, why this was such a horrific mess. So... Like I said before, it, it's supposed to be this like grand adventure of a film, but they had a lot of trouble with animation and editing. So it it was released in 1985, like I said, but it began pre-production in 1973. And there's like a ton of animators working on it throughout the 70s. And like because of the number of storylines and characters like from all of the books, they had so many people working on it. And it was originally set to be released in 1980, but they had to push it to Christmas 1984 because of the inability to draw realistic human characters. Like the CEO at the time, someone submitted, I think, like a pastel sketches by Mel Shaw was the artist. And he said they were too advanced. So they like started again. And then actual production didn't begin until 1980. The producer, Joe Hale, Josh, you'll find this interesting, tossed uh, artwork submitted by Tim Burton, who walked out of production of the film oh wow i think he worked on the film for like a year good and job he walked Tim. out and a boy <laughs> he walked out because i think one of the articles said like he was trying to combine artwork with another artist and like when you compromise tim burton's work like it's no longer mm-hmm. tim burton so he was on the project but then he left yeah so like it was set to be released in 1984 but before they released it they did a test screening um, for the rough cut and it was held in a private theater and like after the film particularly the scene like the Colgen born scene they call it you know where like the army rises and all that it was too intense and disturbing for the majority of the children in the audience most of whom ran out of the theater in terror before it was even finished what <laughs> what wimps I wasn't like that as a kid right Come like on. me neither I, I actually like that part yeah, that's, I, I thought great. it was cool. I mean, I got mm-hmm. I get scared. I got scared of the Pee Wee Large Marge part as a kid, so I could see kind of how this is <laughs> disturbing. Yeah, yeah. So they had to do like I I think like the chairman ordered certain scenes from the Cauldron to be cut as a result like the children being so afraid and the producer like objected like he wouldn't do it he didn't want to cut anything so the chairman actually like went in himself and edited it so like there's some really like bad rough cuts Uh. like just like cuts i found this out after i watched it but i'm sure if i went back and watched it in some of those scenes like the editing is not good (laughs) um anyway ultimately he cut about 12 minutes and most of it was like from the cauldron scene But it was just like years and and years of this film being a train wreck. And it just did not come out as they wanted it to. So yeah, that's that's what I got for you. The more you know, it almost killed Disney animation, but it didn't. It's interesting that this is this kind of sets the table of Disney being able to properly handle a fantasy series to conclusion. Because Mm -hmm. obviously Alice in Wonderland, the original animation is a beloved, you know, classic and I'm sure it made money and everything. But it that they they bungled the live action Alice in Wonderland, Alice, you know, uh, the Wonderland 
series, right? They think they made two movies and then shut that down. They bungled the Narnia movies. They only made a few of those. They never finished that up. And they mm-hmm. just destroyed my boy Artemis Fowl. I, that, that won't get another movie. So like... Oh, no. I mean, it's that's crazy that they don't know how to handle like fantasy franchises. Like they can do fairy tales, mm-hmm. you know? But like actual franchises, you know, the the company known for building franchises maintaining franchises like can't do it you know that's crazy yeah like i said they have the rights to like all the whole book series and it was just such a disaster the first time they well they're not dare they're remaking again. everything so we'll probably get a live action black cauldron in five I years hope. starring hope. like what taron edgerton <laughs> they're gonna star andy circus in it yes probably yeah. right <laughs> and then people oh that's great casting Oh, that's 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 great casting. And then it'll make, and then it'll bomb at the box office because no one gives a shit about Black Cauldron, and yeah, like no one cares. And then there'll never be another Black Cauldron movie again. Uh, so thanks for teaching us. Now I know more. Yeah, thank you, Miss Potter. Ugh. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, do we want to learn less and go to the Apple Facts? Absolutely. <laughs> I think that's how I'm going to start positioning it. We learned more, and now we're going to learn a little less. Uh, Michelle, you're reading the Apple Facts this week. It's your movie. It's your decision to put us through this, so you have to put up with my bullshit. (laughs) All right. Let's get into it, guys. Okay. Apple Fact number one. The death of Walt Disney, corporate raiders, Michael Eisner, and the Black Cauldron. What do these things all have in common? All almost destroyed the Walt Disney Company. This movie lost so much money that the animation studio almost went belly up. Lucky for them, they were able to pull a gurgi and come back from the dead with an actual good movie in The Little Mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I think technically Roger Rabbit came out a year before Little Mermaid, but you know, we won't get into specifics. But who made yeah. who made Roger Rabbit? What what company? It's something there's some like um I feel like it was some collaboration between Disney and another studio. Or it was like a subsidiary of Disney. It might have been like a Miramax movie or something, like a yeah, subsidiary even... of it, or like a Touchstone movie, something. So it think like Disney owns it, like Disney owns the property. But I don't even. I don't know, know if it was like a specifically. I don't think it was a specific like Disney classic animation. You oh, you know, no, it definitely wasn't that. But I didn't even know Disney had any hand in it. Yeah, yeah. I think they I, they were at least like the like produced it or something or distributed it or something. They had something to do with it. Good movie. Love it. This is a really good one. Okay. <laughs> um, Apple fact number two. Uh, John Hurt is in this movie as the Horn King. I wonder what pain to more, being in a movie that nobody remembers or having an alien burst out of his chest cavity. I mean, on the one hand, the alien literally breaks through the bone, muscle, and flesh to escape. But on the other hand, it's the Black Cauldron. Neither could be a pleasant experience. I don't care how successful of an actor you are. But I guess it's true what they say. Everybody hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yep, John Hurt, famous, very well-known actor. Most famous probably for Alien, for the chest burster. He had the chest burster come out of his chest. And then he was also in this, do it sounding like Skeletor. So That's crazy. I don't know what's yep. going on. <laughs> He's like the only name in the movie, too. Yeah. Oh, wait, Colin, side note. Um, Roger Rabbit was Touchstone, but it also was Walt Disney Animation Studios. So yeah, I guess... didn't they own Touchstone too? I guess so. I didn't know that, but yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a Disney property. I just didn't know, like, yeah, it had something to do with, yeah, I guess it was just Disney collaborating, like, with yeah. themselves. <laughs> so, Michelle, do we have? Yeah, Apple Fact number three. If you go to Disney World or Disneyland, you will find virtually no acknowledgement uh, of the Black Cauldron. <laughs> I mean, how how low can you get? Even Song of the South has its own ride, and that's a regressive and racist film that you can't even watch anymore. Uh, anywhere, sorry. Splash Mountain opened in 1989. Uh, that means since 1989, the Walt Disney Company has decided that racism is actually a preferred alternative to the Black Cauldron. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> they would rather have racism in their park than the Black Cauldron. <laughs> That's so terrible. <laughs> that's, that's the, that's the, 
I don't even know what it is. That's how bad the black. I guess it means that black the black cauldron's worse than race, in Disney's <laughs> viewpoint at least. Yeah, there really is like no. <laughs> There's just nothing. There's nothing. They don't want to remember that movie. They just. Don't. I mean, I can you know. I'll save my. All I'll right. hold my tongue. Uh, so the main character of this film uh, is named Taryn. Let's not talk about him and talk about a much more interesting Taryn and Taryn Killam. Uh, d- dude has been around forever. Stuck in the suburbs, Scrubs, Mad TV, How I Met Your Mother, SNL, New Girl, and he even played King George in Hamilton. Spalding from M- Moody's Point played King George the Third in the Tony-winning musical Hamilton. Excuse me, but why are we not talking about Taron Killam more often? Did you know he's married to Colby Smulders? I mean, the dude is literally killing it in every single aspect of his life since he was a teenager. Meanwhile, Taron from this movie doesn't even save the day. He literally gets yeeted into some (laughs) stairs while a bull sucks up the villain. I guess you could say Taron didn't kill him. Yeah, Taron didn't do shit in this movie. He got thrown into some stairs, and then the <laughs> Horn King stumbled into the culture. Yo, that, <laughs> that like bullshit? I made a note like the easiest defeat I've ever seen in any movie. You got this like <laughs> he went out like a chomp. You could he literally pushed his feet a little bit, and that caused the whole demise of the Horned King. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Meanwhile, Taron Killen has has been on TV since I was a kid. And was on yeah. SNL, and he's married to he really Colby Smulders. I mean, that is just, he is all about it. And Taryn from this movie, what, kisses a girl, gets tricked into kissing, the, they get tricked into kissing each other or whatever by fucking Gurgi. Mm-hmm. Ugh, what a punk ass. All right. <clears throat> Apple fact number five. <laughs> Listen up, y'all, because this is it. The facts that I'm writing are delicious. Gurgalicious definition make head when go loco. They want my munchies so they can get their crunchies from my cauldron. I'm the G to the U, R G the I, no E, and ain't no Disney sidekicks flying down like me. I'm gurgalicious. <laughs> it's hot, hot. <laughs> you can thank the one auto, the one time Gurgi auto corrected to Fergie in my phone for that little light bulb. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, Gurgalicious. So those are the Apple facts. Um, Thank you, Colin, yeah. for those Apple facts. <sighs> yeah. So who wants to talk about this piece of crap first? <laughs> so let's let's get started. So uh, um, yeah. So we it, it opens up after the nice little exposition about the king and the yeah what all that all that stuff. And you get this nice little cozy. So, so wait, hold on, hold on. Before we get started, I'm sorry. So, what was the Black Cauldron created for again? What was the purpose of it? Uh, Michelle, you got this one. Um, hold on. Let's just say the same reason the ring was created. One cauldron to rule them all. Yeah. So that's, okay. I'm just trying to figure it out because somewhere my wires must have gotten crossed because I thought the cauldron imprisoned the Horned King, but he's just walking about looking for it i i know i was confused with that a little bit too like wasn't he the like the person they were talking about in the beginning yeah wasn't he but he he just seemed like when as the movie progressed he just seemed like another evil man that wanted power yeah so i I wasn't sure i honestly don't know i was a little confused with that myself wait so why would they make something that would like why would they make something that would like take away evil but also you can use it for evil (laughs) Actually, wait. Just yeah, make something on. that takes evil away. The mm-hmm. the man was thrown into molten iron, okay? And then his spirit was captured and formed into a great black cauldron. So I thought that was the I thought that was his like character. I thought so too, but it's a different cuz there's a face on the cauldron. Oh, what? No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so, yeah, so the face a... on the cauldron is a different dude completely. I I think so. I guess yeah. so. And it the has horned to be. king is just like some guy. Just some some like asshole king that just wants all yeah. the power. They also mention that there's a war going on in the beginning of the mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, we never mm-hmm. touch on that again. No, yeah, it's it's just a lot of bits and pieces <laughs> of like a bunch of different plot lines, honestly. But so yeah, so we open on this nice little cozy cottage in the woods. Um, kind of, it, it reminds me of Snow White a little bit, but just a, like like not as good. Um, 
what are they cooking in the house? This this awful meal that um, Dalbin is that, is that how you say his name? Dolbin, yeah, or whatever. Dolbin, mm-hmm. yeah. He's making this awful meal that no one wants a piece of. Is it porridge? Is it like slop? Yeah, it, it's yeah. slop. It's porridge. So well, also he's sitting around and he's like, "What's the horned king waiting for? What's he waiting for? What's he gonna do?" And it's like, "Are you like a part of the war effort, or are you just like your own little thing hoarding information?" Well, no, it's, like it's, and he's like no, he's like freaking out. He's like, "What's what's the horned king up to?" And it's like, dude, you seem like you're a farmer. Chill the fuck out. It comes this together at the fight. end. We find out why at the very end. Do we? I don't remember. Which annoyed me. Um, but yeah, so one thing I noted is that um, Taryn u- uses a towel to lift the hot ass lid on the pot. And then he leaves. Or, or no, no, he doesn't leave. This man, Dolbin, barehanded, takes off the lid while he's holding the towel in the other hand. I'm just like, <laughs> I was like, yo, you got fireproof hands? Like, how does that not hurt? <laughs> He he held like the um the handle with the towel, but he touched the whole pot, the the lid <laughs> with his other hand. Like, oh yeah, that's 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 counterproductive. No, that's good. Yeah. He's got a pig that can see visions and he's got hands that <laughs> are blessed by fire. But yeah, then he's got so that, yeah, then he's got Henwen who um, you know, gets gets high as hell every time you you spit out the incantation. <laughs> like <laughs> like which I, I wrote I wrote that little that little chant out. <laughs> oh, you let's hear it. Henwen from you I do beseech knowledge that lies beyond my reach. Troubled thoughts weigh on your heart. Pray you now those thoughts in part. And then she just gets she oh man, she loses it. She is high as She really does. Yeah. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> she's gone. She dips her face in that water and she's just yeah, she's, just she's just hallucinating. She's in it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm oh, doing the I'm doing the Halloween chant from town. Halloween Town. <laughs> <laughs> Josh got it. I, I heard it. Josh knew it. <laughs> That's um, incredible. I didn't. <laughs> I thought that was a deep cut. Oh no, no, I've seen that movie one too many times. That you you pull anything from that. I'll <laughs> the way she says it. That's what it reminded me of when he was doing this little. He's swirling his little gross fucking old man finger in the water and chanting shit, getting that pig all fucked up. <laughs> um there was one part where it there was a little tune that was like that I liked a lot. It was like literally 5 seconds. I have it right here. Um it was after the pig starts screaming they bring her in before they get they just get her ripped and he's like lighting the candle. <laughs> And it's when it's all like like moody and he's lighting the candle. There's like this music that plays over. It's like this little like magical tune that plays. Ooh. Really liked it. I don't know. It's like I don't know. It just caught my attention for for a solid five seconds. That's it. This this also wasn't a musical, which for a Disney movie is not the norm. It's a little I refreshing, would say, right? Even though even if it's not like a home run or even like a base hit, but I wouldn't even say it's a sack fly. But <laughs> you know. Yeah, it it was different in that regard. I can't think of many Disney movies. Well, I, that's not true. I can. I'm thinking of a bunch from them right now. All right, forget it. <laughs> Wait a minute. So I have this note here, and it, and I'm, now I'm a little confused. After um, Hen sees the visions and all that, Taryn takes her away, and they they embark on their journey. Okay, and then it cuts to the Horn King awakening from what I for, I kind of forget that scene. Taking then, a nap. And then he does his whole like evil monologue and his desire for power and to be a god among mortal men, all that good stuff. But like, where does he come from? It's like it's like something just awoke him from from Henwen. So that's why I thought he was like the Black Cauldron, I guess, or like a spirit from there. I guess he was like a was he? A, no, he couldn't have been. He couldn't have come from the Cauldron. Yeah, no, I don't. There's. I don't think so. The information is not laid out in a yeah, way that just, makes any sort of sense. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um. And then, then we get um Gergi, which it's just it's just unbelievable every second he's on screen. That's we we touched on it before. Actually, we we dove into it before. There's a nice jump scare coming up. Um. When the, when Taryn sneaks into the castle and then the dog barks in his face. I don't know if you guys jumped when mm-hmm. you saw that. Nice little jump scare there. There's something I want to. I have I have a note of next when the henchman slices his broomstick and. And he, and he points the sword. He, like, picks him up and he points the sword at him. 
these swords must be so dull because this happens a lot in animated movies. They point like a blade into your skin and you see the puncture, but it never actually pierces. It just You just see like the, like, like your head laying on a cushion. That's what it looks like. And I'm like, how does this, how does that, that tip never just like, boop, go in you? Yeah. So yeah, just, boop. you know. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys Kids have any notes? I feel, I feel like I'm just running with this uh, this movie. Yeah, I've got some notes. Um, let's see. I have Taryn sucks butts on here. Mm. Um, he he abuses the goat on the farm. We kind of touched on that, you know. But fuck them geese. Um, immediately loses the pig. We talked about that. Uh, Taryn is a moron. Uh, listen, I sounds like you guys are all aboard the Gurgi train. He's a little shit. I'm not a big fan. Oh, I'm not I a fan of him. Kinda, I, I think he's annoying as hell. Um, he is. Yeah, he's I don't like, I don't like him. Oh, yeah, so it's like, he's like, oh, you're my friend, but also, fuck off. <laughs> and like, like, he needs to pick a lane. Oh, remember those things that come uh, for the pig? Yeah. Pick up the pig? Dragons? Oh, what did you call them? Dragons? No, Michelle. Um, they are not dragons. Um, I don't know why you would possibly think they're dragons. They are... Waverns, I think they're called. <laughs> oh my bad. Okay. Dragon dragons have four um, limbs and appendages. Uh, mm-hmm. Waverns only have legs and wings. So mm. the more you know, the more. Ooh. I don't know if that's okay. how they're pronounced. <laughs> I just knew that there was a difference. Um, yeah, and then the Horn King's just like you know, hey, I'm gonna use this shit for evil. <laughs> it's like he's no like normally a compelling villain's like. I'm doing it for the greater good, but he's just like, you know, I'm evil. So suck it. <laughs> well, the scene where the Wolverines get Henwin was like the scene I remember the most. Like, I just love that scene as a kid with him, like uh, Taryn, like running through the vines, like chasing after Henwin. It was great. And it was still great. We watched, like that scene. And that's my favorite scene, probably. Well, besides like the actual cauldron born scene that one's pretty great but yeah i love the intensity of that scene I, I i was excited up until that point like when henry gets stolen immediately but then it it just lost everything <laughs> it just was a mess i think it's pronounced wyvern it. by the way wyverns <laughs> how about when uh when when fluter is getting chained up in that in the basement or dungeon, whatever. Yeah, and and he just says, "Careful, sire. These are the hands of an artist." <laughs> good. Nice little quote. Fluter's from... fucking useless until the last five minutes of this goddamn movie. <laughs> what's with his harp? Why why does it break every time he lies? Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, what's this like... Pinocchio ass bullshit? Yeah, it's just a random. It's just a random piece of another Disney film. I just like. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it, there's no purpose. There, there's no purpose for it. I'm excited to get into the witches where Fluter like borderline almost gets laid by one of them and like is just getting a lap dance by her. She was she wants to pluck his harp and I don't know all kinds of nasty. I mean, but we should talk about this this sword that he finds too. Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. Just randomly finds this sword. It's like I wrote. It's like when you pick up an end game item in the first thirty minutes into your game, and it's just like. <laughs> tearing through everything <laughs> it's just just it's because it makes him like a good fighter too and it just melts the steel and all that also who built this castle he is just pushing bricks and stone out of the way like it's nothing he's tearing it apart he's pushing the wall down like the the the, the stone masonry of this castle is terrible or the upkeep maybe it's just so old that it just can't keep up one of the when Taryn is like first imprisoned, he, he's sitting against the wall. He picks up the stone once, hits it against the go- the wall once, yeah. and then gives up and immediately drops. <laughs> I didn't know he's what was worst. happening there. I didn't like understand what he was doing. <laughs> he's the worst. <laughs> he was trying to escape, but he literally hit the wall once, and then he was like, "Oh, I can't do it." His only attribute is that he's brave. So that means he's also, like, dumb. He's not a good fighter. <laughs> he's just dumb and brave. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I don't know. And then he's so unlikable. He's arrogant. Princess Alonwi. Which save him. sounds like they're saying a long we. Like she got to pee for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's up with the names, but. They're terrible. They're all bad names. They're all bad, not memorable. The only memorable name is the Horned King. 
and Fergie. Right. How about the weird fairy cave after they get sucked down the magenta whirlpool? Oh, oh. with Santa fairy? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, it's just randomly placed in there, just out of nowhere. I, did they even serve a purpose, like, at any point? Like, at the end, did they ever come back? Yeah, they gave him fizzy lifting drink, and they kind of floated up out of that cave. <laughs> no, like, after that. Like, do they ever come back after that scene? No, the one guy is like, fuck this shit, and he leaves. Yeah. <laughs> fuck this you guys fucked up (laughs) yeah i didn't remember that part either like what well the one the one guy is at the end right at the um yeah at the house which i guess implies that he like they were like in cahoots almost like maybe yeah Um, also they keep referring they keep calling this this how old is is princess alanwi like 14 maybe they keep talking about her looks. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> the fairies talk about how pretty she is. The, the Gurgi talks about how pretty she is. Stop. She's mm-hmm. like a little kid. Relax. I mean, it's... It, it, I just... I don't... I don't know what to say about this movie. I am, like, dumbstruck by how all over the place this film was. They go okay. So let's get into the witches then, because they get they get to the witches. Gladly. They get to this little this little hovel. This little this little thing looks like half like Yoda's fucking little hut from Star Wars, and half of the Madame Mims from Sword in the Stone little hovel, right? And there's frogs everywhere that are apparently people. Don't touch on that again. Um, and then th- th- they, they, there are these three witches just there. And they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, we know where the cauldron is. And it's like, what? Why do they know where the cauldron is? But we don't want the cauldron. We want that fucking sword, dude. And it's like, why do you want the sword? What are you going to do with the sword? You use magic. What are you going to do with the sword? And then they turn yeah. him into a frog and they bounce the fucking, what's his name, bounce around her goddamn tits. And it's ridiculous <laughs> and dumb and... I just I hated every moment of that. That was like one of my favorite scenes. What are you talking about? The that was whole so, thing made me uncomfortable, it was just and so I hated weird. it. Oh, so uncomfortable. That was that I was hated hol- every it was so funny. I was cracking up. I was like, <laughs> I liked when he was he was a frog, and she like turned him back into a human and grabbed his head and like just <laughs> rammed them into the jugs, like just completely. <laughs> and then she the turns salt. him back into a frog, and he's just engulfed in the mass. <laughs> bouncing like literally in and out trying to take breaths and it's like a just a close-up of them it's just so ridiculous i know it's (laughs) i don't i don't like it (laughs) and then they make this all right oh so first of all and then they're like oh well we want your sword for to tell you you know to give you the cauldron we want the sword and instantly it turns like no I'm not giving up. I'm not sacrificing this cool badass sword. No. And then the what's his name is like, oh, you can have my prize possession. And they're like, fuck that. And then uh, uh, Fergie is like, well, you can have my prize possession. And they're like, no. And it's like everyone else except for Taryn is like giving up the thing they care most about. Meanwhile, Taryn can't be bothered to like give up his sword he got five minutes ago. And then eventually he's like, all right, fine, you can take it because we're going to destroy it. And then they get bamboozled because Mm -hmm. Taryn's a fucking moron. Not to mention they actually just take Gurgi's prized possession and just eat it real quick. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yep. Fergie. Poor Fergie for... So the cauldron (laughs) scene. Okay, let's wrap this up. Well, like, well, okay, but they get the cauldron, right? And then the witches are like, oh, but you fucked up with us because you can't destroy it, idiots. And then they're like, but you can cancel out its powers if someone willingly goes into the cauldron, which is such a weird loophole. I know. It's so easy. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, oh, we just have to climb. It's like, oh, but you'll be dead forever. And it's like, yeah, so we have to sacrifice ourselves. But it's in like the dumbest lamest way possible (laughs) so the two main like antagonists in this the horn king and the cauldron are so easily defeated it's like not even funny (laughs) yeah you you dive in one and you literally barely drop kick the other the witches were a bigger problem for them i know than the cauldron or the horn king by far yeah so so they actually trick them so the horn king he like grabs Terran and he's like like says oh yeah you're like I don't even know what he's trying to do to him. He's trying to, like, 
I guess that's not willingly going in. You have to willingly go in. But he's, like, grabbing him. And Terrence just gives him a little shove with his feet. And the guy, like, Stone, is like, oh, whoa, whoa. I don't have anything to grab onto. And I'm like, oh, is that really the end of him? He's, like, stumbling around like he's drunk. And then he's like, he's like, oh, no, not today. And he, like, grabs Terrence anyway. And he shoves him against the stairs, which ends up saving his life. So I'm like, okay, he's back. He didn't get defeated. And then out of nowhere, Terrence's doing nothing. He's like, I don't know if he's, like, talking, but he realizes, oh, well, no, he's trying to, like, walk back to the pillar to get a hold of it. So it's just, like, an extra, like, 20 seconds of him, like, almost defeating Terran by throwing him off the pillar. And then he's just, like, trying to grab it, and he just can't seem to muster the strength to, like, get to it. And he's like, oh, shit, I'm gonna, like, get sucked in. Oh, this is it. M- meanwhile, this is it. Terran's being saved by a step. You would think you would just lay down. <laughs> Like, just drop. Like, just stop, drop, and roll. Well, even before that, right, Gurgi does his whole sacrifice. He's like, oh, don't jump in there, master. It's kind of weird he calls him master, first off. But he's like, Gurgi comes back because his whole arc is like, he's a coward. But then at the end, he comes back to save his friends or whatever. Um, Gurgi says something along the lines of, uh, Terran has lots of friends. Gurgi has no friends. We have roughly the same amount of friends. <laughs> Let's just be honest with each other. Terran just met these people. They, he knows them just about as yeah. long as you know them. But Gurgi jumps in. He he swan dives in. He doesn't really. So he like kind of belly flops in. And um, so the cauldron is defeated at that point, right? He, someone sacrificed themselves, right? Why the fuck is Terran going to the cauldron in the first place? He's like, they did the thing. You did the thing. You get to leave now. And he's like, I gotta go, you guys leave, I gotta go to this cauldron. <laughs> Why are you going well, did, towards the didn't, cauldron? Didn't he, want to, didn't he want to somehow, like, get Gurgi back or something like but that? But he's dead. He He's fucking dead. Terran, wow. this is the problem. Terran's a moron. He yes. doesn't listen when they're like, oh, yeah, you won't come back, you're dead. And he's like, I gotta go get Gurgi. <laughs> like, he thinks he's alive still. Like, he doesn't have, op- like, he's a baby. He doesn't have object permanence. He doesn't understand the what death is either. Which why why can't you just let Gurgi die? And I'm not trying to be mean, but like have a little emotional like like I don't know, just have a little a sacrifice something. that means yeah. something. I I can't like in stand. Princess and the Frog when the when the firefly dies and he's off, he's a little boop in the yeah. sky like, at the I very end. It's beautiful. The trap that especially Disney like just can't seem to like get away from is they just can't let people die. Just let them die. Let yeah, let, you, let it mean something. You can't let people die in a Disney movie unless it's parents. Then you're open season. Yeah, like <laughs> even in even in like even in like Marvel movies, it like takes forever for like someone to actually like go. And even <laughs> even then, they're trying to bring them back somehow. I don't know if you like. I don't know. It's just constantly like bringing people back in some way. It's like okay, well now I don't care about it as much anymore. It's not as good of an ending now. Because I just know it just, it's, there's no threat. There's no, like, there's mm-hmm. nothing. There's no stakes here. If, if it's this easy to bring the person back, what? All right, let me just do it for a second and be a hero. Bring me back. Yeah. None of the, none of the main characters lost anything in this movie. Yeah. They like, didn't lose anything. Not even his Taren sword. Taron lost a sword he had for five minutes. Well, he gets it back, doesn't he? No, because oh, they're not? like, I don't we, remember. Because the witches show up again, and they're like, we actually want the cauldron now, and we'll give you the sword. <laughs> Wait, you just traded. Why do you want the sword? Why? Why do you want the cauldron now? Again. Mm-hmm. Now, isn't they want, now they the cauldron both. fucking useless? They Didn't they want, like, both or something? I don't know. They just... No, I think that they were going to trade the, cal- the, the sword back for the cauldron, but the cauldron's just useless now. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. And that's when the flute, flute fucker was like... Uh, the loot, whatever. Who's like he kind of like he kind of like negs the witches. He kind of like Jafar yeah. negs them, like how Aladdin's like you'll never be as powerful as the genie. He's like, well, you guys aren't that powerful at all. And they're like, well, we'll show you. We'll do something dumb. What? Okay, can someone explain that part to me? Because I must have just not been paying attention. What happens then that like defeats them? They they're not like defeated. Yeah, they're not so, defeated. Like... They get the cauldron and the sword, but they bring back Gurgi. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. I actually forgot. Okay, cool. Which, that's such a fucking waste. Just let that little annoying shit be dead. I know. Take the sword next time, <laughs> idiot. Um, so, and then Gurgi comes back. He's makes the two, he makes Terran and Longwee kiss. And it's really weird and awkward. Um, and then they, what, 
it's dark outside and then it's light outside the next scene the next you know cut um which is great and then they go back to the old fuckers little little hut and the the fairy guys there and he's like oh looks like they're doing they did a good job and then the last word of this movie is i shit you not yep that's the last word of this movie is the little fairy guy goes yep wait really <laughs> Yes, I thought it was you. Did the, you did well, my boy? No, the yeah, no. The old guy says that he's like they. You did well or something, and then the little fairy guy goes, "Yep," and then it's the end of the movie. <laughs> I mean, we didn't really even get into like the animation, which at sometimes is so rough. Like the. Okay, so I'll be honest. I actually like. I like the animation in this. Like some parts, I but don't. When but when like, they. They bring the the when he brings the the um dead the soul whatever the lifeless bodies back to life or whatever the deadless bodies to life, ter- it's terrible. It looks just awful. Which is kind of another thing I'm surprised you guys didn't bring up with Lord of the Rings when Aragorn brings back the ghost army. You know. Mm. Yeah, I actually didn't. I I I didn't have a problem with with most of the animation in this. I I kind of liked it. Like it's the you know. I don't know. You could see the lines. On the camera, like the, oh, out, like the you outside could see them of the lines. So well, Ugh. yeah. Some of it was really rough. I thought. Um, I thought. I thought. I thought a lot of it was cool. It was cool animation, even if it wasn't like like perfected. Like it wasn't like like it didn't look like it was like expertly done all the time. I still kind of liked it. Yeah, but it's a Disney movie. You expect it to be expertly done, right? <laughs> but it's <laughs> like... it's it feels like it feels like a weird like it feels like like a little out of the box for Disney. Like it just it just look it. I don't know. It had like this weird like um kind of edge to it in some way. I don't really know how to explain it, but it it just it felt a little like different for Disney, which I I actually kind of liked. I don't know. It looked like Dragon Slayer in Space Ace. That's what it looked like to me. Well, I'm excited to hear ratings. How do we want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go first. Okay, go for it. <laughs> um oof. This was rough, you guys. Like I, like I said, it was my favorite movie as a kid. I just loved how scary it was. I, I just, I just loved its edge. Oh, I loved it so much. Um, and rewatching it, it is a whole mess, and it, it is not the grand, big, scary adventure I remember. Though, like some of it's still good. I was disappointed, and I don't think that I would watch it again soon or at, Well, maybe in many years, but I would not watch it again or recommend it to anyone. Um, yeah, my uh, gut rating for this one is a 39 out of 97. 39 yes. out of 97. Mm-hmm. Wow, Michelle. Okay. What? You think that's No, no, I'll, I'll, well, I'll, I'll go into my rating and then, then, I'll, then I'll say my words. Do you want to go next, Josh? No, I want to hear Colin. Oh, um, this was <laughs> dog shit. This was terrible. <laughs> This was the worst thing. I, oh, okay, what? so famously, I gave Gushers a seven. I don't know if I can give oh, it a seven. On. You cannot give this a no. seven. I'm giving it a. I'm giving it a twelve. You um, can pull some this like good was things from it. So what? bad. I was oh. bored watching it, and it's like an hour and twenty minutes. It's it. I. Oh, it's a mess. None of the characters are likable. The voice acting is so bad, other than the Horn King, and he has like five lines. The villain, I don't know what his deal is. He gets defeated by a by by a pot, and the the hero of the the whole movie doesn't even do a goddamn thing. Gurgi sacrifices himself, but he doesn't sacrifice himself. What's the point of the princess? What's the point of the other guy? What's the point of any of this? None. There's no point to it. It's bad. The adventure wasn't fun. The No one loses anything. There are no stakes. I don't know the stakes of the world. He's going to take it over by being evil. What What are these other people done? That's, if most of these people are like Terran, good. I kind of would rather the Horn King win, except he's a weak little shit who can't even walk. He can't walk. The villain can't walk forward, okay? He can't walk forward. It's it's the worst Disney movie I have ever seen, except for maybe Phantom of the Megaplex. <laughs> it's really? a little bit better than Phantom of the Megaplex, but that's not saying much. 12 out of 94. I stand by my rating. 
uh, hurts. Yeah, that's, that's too low. I think that's too low. Yeah. There's, it's so bad. It's the worst Disney animated movie I've seen since Chicken Little. I think Chicken Little's worse. Think, I, it may, I, I would might agree be. with that. Yeah. I might give Chicken Little a 10 if we ever review it, but I'm, I, I don't think we should. <laughs> um. So I'm going to give this. So, Michelle, I had a rating. And then I lower, like, mm-hmm. I was, like, I was, like, thinking about it more. I was, like, like going between, like, ratings. And I was thinking of 39 exactly, but Ooh, I bumped uh, it down a little bit to 37. Okay. 37. You guys are too generous with yeah, this. Yeah, it feels fitting that I should there, give this the there's, highest rating. There's some stuff that I just, that I liked about this more on the technical side. Not, th- there's nothing about this story that I like. I don't think, like, any of the characters are good. Like, everything Colin said, I agree with pretty much in terms of, mm-hmm. like, the substance of it. But in terms of, like, the technical side, I actually kind of like some of the stuff. Um, I don't think it's as terrible as, as, as all that. I, and I think there's some, like, there's some moments on, of it that are, that are fine. They're, they're, they're just fine. They're, like, there's some cool things about the movie, even though it's extremely basic and grabs from, like, everything it can feast its eyes on. But there, there's, like, there's, like, a... A little like um, I don't even want to say charm because there's not charm really to it, but there's like a <laughs> no, I don't it's know charmless. Yeah, there's an edge. There's just a little yeah, bit the, of an yeah. Edge. I don't know what it is, but it's it's more technical. Why it gets at some points that I that I like. And I, I, don't, I don't know how you can say there's edge when you just got finished saying that there's no stakes for anyone. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying I'm uh, no. I'm honest. No, I said that. No, I I'm saying edge in terms of like the animation. That's all I'm talking about. Just oh, so the animation looked bad, so that made it a good movie. Gotcha. Not bad. I thought I thought it looked cool. I li- I yeah. like the animation in it. Um, but this is a thirty-one percent. That's fair. That's that's good for so, this. You know. You know. It's good for this. If you actually look this up, so like you know, you guys know how it was a it was a Disney movie that cost forty. It was the most expensive yeah, animated movie of all time. So if you look on Metacritic, which which we all know is a very strict like rating site, this has a fifty nine. Like that's yeah, that's I saw I crazy. saw that. Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's crazy. almost green. That's crazy. That that is crazy. That is very high. But like, so it's it's not it's not like all viewed as like terrible. I guess my point is, if you're gonna watch a weird Disney movie that's like about uh you know mystical things and stuff, just watch Sword in the Stone instead. Because I, I mean that movie's not great, but it's better than that. Um, well, guys, <laughs> um, if you like what you listen to, feel free to leave us a good review um, on Apple Podcasts and look out for new episodes every Tuesday. You can find us wherever you find podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, so on and so forth. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Millennial Milkshake and on Twitter at Milk Based Pod. You can follow all of us on our personal social media. You can follow Colin at The Last Call on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can follow Josh on Instagram at joshy underscore one two four. That's Joshy with an I E. And you can follow me on Instagram at Michelle Thoughts, like the way you think. And that's all we got for you today. Thank you guys for joining me. Thanks everyone. <laughs> for this, uh, Colin, yeah, I'm yeah, so, I'm thanks. sorry you're yeah, in misery. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's on me, guys. You know, it is what it is. I just, I, and someone else needs to close this episode out. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> yeah, and if you like this movie, don't please don't. Let Michelle. me know. Please don't. Yeah, let Michelle know. Don't let me know. I could not give less of a it. crap. <laughs> <laughs>